Um, uh, I'll be talking to you guys today about NPM 12.1. I'll be giving you a sneak peek. This is the next version of NPM coming out. NPM, for those of you that don't know, is our performance network performance monitoring tool. So it tells you fault and availability and performance um, for networks. Uh, so you guys may uh, recognize me. I've spoken to you guys twice, I think. Uh, I'm the product manager for NPM. Um, and I'm excited to tell you about these specific pieces of NPM 12.1. We'll take a look at the NetPath enhancements I presented to you guys before on NetPath. Um, so uh, excited to give you some of the news about the enhancements there. I'll also talk to you about our improved Cisco uh, Meraki wireless monitoring. Um, so we uh, monitored Meraki wireless gear before, but now we're doing it today. <laughs> going to share that with you, as well as perf stack analysis, which I'm really excited about. Um, so real quickly here with uh, NetPath, we've made a, a number of changes um, in 12.1, and really the, the goal here is to improve uh, the accuracy, the completeness, the reliability, um, and add in little bits of, of areas where we can be more clear to the user about what the data is saying to us. So um, a lot of minor improvements there. There are two uh, things that we don't normally talk about that I'd like to talk about here, which is the tooling. So we have um, NetPath by nature is a complicated thing. You know, it's this proprietary uh, algorithm that we've come up with. We're crafting custom packets, listening to responses, and trying to analyze that and figure out what's going on. Um, so one of the challenges for us is as we deploy this more widely in our customer base, customers sometimes have problems with NetPath itself. So uh, when we talk to our development team and, and I think about this, um, we are you know, sort of graph theory guys. So um, we've developed some tooling to help with this automatically. And the first thing there is assisted debug. So this is a way that the tool now um, sort of built into the debug view uh, will uh, sort of analyze the graph as a whole and start to come to conclusions about your network that uh, 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 aren't just about fault. So it may be able to discover things like you have a WAN optimizer here, you have a proxy here, or, or there's something blocking this traffic um, other than blocking the, the, the NetPath traffic specifically. Um, so it's a really interesting uh, way that we're, we're able to categorize this. And the interesting thing to me is, uh, you know, it, it's another level of analysis, and it's also um, something that we can update real time. So we've created a, a syntax um, to be able to describe a graph. We can deploy that at any time without a software release. And then based on that syntax, we can show the user a message and a link. Um, so this is something that's like primarily for us. Um, mostly it's seen by our support group and a little bit by customers when we're extra sure of that scenario. But it's really cool having this sort of live interaction with the product, um, even though this is an on-prem product. The other one I'd like to mention is automated packet capture. So when, when we get uh, any sort of accuracy problem with NetPath, uh, NetPath being a relatively new feature, we want to dig in very quickly because NetPath is all about completeness and accuracy of the uh, network topology it's discovering, the network um, path that it's discovering. So when we dig in deeply to that, we tend to need to do a packet capture. So when you're um, working with customers, that tends to mean that you need to open up WebEx, you need to RDP to a server, you need to install Wireshark, you need to run Wireshark with the correct filter, and all of these different steps. You try and do that over the phone, it takes you like an hour, right? Um, so it takes a lot of time, it's not fun for the support guy, the uh, 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 end user, like everyone wants this to go faster. So uh, again, we've got a bunch of developers, their solution was be able to do that remotely. Um, so you can now go in the tool and do run a debug view, click on a, a checkbox, and we will automatically run a capture um, where your uh, probe is, the thing that's doing the probing of the network, with the right filters. It will deliver it up to your server, and then we can just double click and take a look at that packet capture. So these are things that, that are sort of helping us support the product, and, but they're also sort of ways for us to try out uh, new ways to interact with our products in the field and, and sort of think about how we would evolve that faster. So pretty excited about those things. But overall... Is there a mechanism... Yeah. So the, both of these rely on a, a connection from the on-premises deployment back into... Um, Absolutely back into right. SolarWinds. Is there a mechanism to get this kind of uh, automated support for a disconnected system? So for, for sites that are dark with no internet? Uh, that would be the whole WebEx thing. That would be, <laughs> but again, so, that, that, that doesn't work for for disconnected either. Yeah, so um, we w in rare scenarios, we work with a lot of Fed. In rare scenarios where it's complete disconnect, 
the connection is a phone call and then they're typing, okay. <laughs> which is a, a little tough, but um, let me know if you have a better idea. But it, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tough situation. Okay, so that's the quick update on NetPath. I wanna to talk to you about Meraki Wireless Next. Um, so this is, we're trying to solve a very specific problem here, which is that Meraki Wireless Gear can only be monitored in SolarWinds uh, one AP at a time, and it's missing uh, client association information. So the one AP at a time thing is very simple. We pull uh, most, we pull through a bunch of protocols, but most of the network gear we pull via uh, SNMP. And there's very limited, you know, we would have to pull the controller in the cloud, this logical entity, and there's limited uh, SNMP data from that entity. Um, so it's not something that's really designed to be great um, from SolarWinds side. So you would have to add APs one at a time and then pull them via SNMP, but again, you know, Meraki sort of being on closer to the edge of innovation for um, network infrastructure, they don't prioritize SNMP. SNMP is starting to get bloated and long in the tooth, uh, maybe a little bit past started. Um, so uh, the, simple, the simple solution for us is to pull via the API. So now in SolarWinds, you can, in NPM, you can uh, add a Meraki controller, your logical Meraki controller um, uh, in the Meraki cloud, and we will go pull against that directly. We will discover all of your APs, we will add the APs automatically as they come online, um, uh, and give you the client statistics. So we'll take a quick look at that. Take a quick look at that here. Let's see, this is this guy, I believe. So the, the interesting thing here is when we first started doing uh, discovery on this, we had a big customer come to us and say, hey, we've got all of this existing legacy infrastructure that's you know sort of fat, as you would call controllers, real hardware controllers in their data center and a whole bunch of access points. They're migrating uh, over to Meraki, and as they do that, they need to be able to monitor the whole thing. And this is a big organization, so they will, for years, have significant infrastructure of both types. So the, the, when we were doing the initial research, I was like, well, what do you want to see from Meraki? Because Meraki's technology is a little bit different. I'm not sure there's a one-to-one -one mapping of what you would want to see from Meraki versus sort of the traditional uh, hardware gear, uh, local hardware gear. And they were very clear that you know, they, they need a single pane of glass. They need all of their old stuff, all of their new stuff look <coughs> basically the same in uh, NPM. So that's what we've done. Um, so in NPM, when you're looking at wireless, uh, uh, you go to this screen, this is the main place operators go to see what's going on. So the view, you can look by uh, clients or access points and elsewhere we've got data on the specific control and specific access points. But here it's kind of all aggregated. And we've got lots and lots of information from lots of vendors and finally we have Meraki as well. So you can see the access points in their status, you can see how many clients they have connected, you know, what their identification is for those clients, like their name and their IP and MAC address and all that sort of stuff. And so we've brought in a lot of data, there's definitely more data we want to bring in over time. Um, uh, and we'll continue to work with Meraki. Meraki has been fantastically helpful through this. They provided, shipped us gear. We love when people ship us gear. Uh, and um, provide technical resources and all that sort of stuff. So really excited to show this sort of um, network that's becoming more hybrid for our customers, getting the visibility into uh, NPM where it's just a single screen that shows all of it. Any questions about Meraki? Will I find the buttons here? All right, we'll jump right over to per stack analysis. So per stack analysis, um, I'm really excited about. This is a, a brand new features for SolarWinds. Um, it's technically a Orion core feature. So Orion is the platform underlying uh, many of our tools like uh, NPM and, and SAM and VMAN for virtualization systems and all of these things. Uh, and you know, the, the core, the purpose of that is, you know, we don't want to build a web server or build a, our integration with a web server 20 times. We want to build an alerting engine 20 times and report. So these sort of underlying infrastructure pieces are handled by that platform. So this um, perf stack feature coming to the platform, what that means is any of the products that plug into that platform get that functionality. And as you add more tools, just more data flows into this. So the, the problem that perf stack's trying to solve here is actually really simple. We're correlating data, uh, where uh, correlating data points is too hard for customers. So you can correlate, customers correlate, you know, all the time uh, this data, but the, 
you know, if you think about yourself doing the correlation, you have to jump to a bunch of different pages. You have to look at a bunch of different resources. You have to have uh, in your mind some idea of what entities are related. You have to go and fiddle with time frames for all of these different resources with all of this different data. And there's just, it feels like a tax, right? It's like sort of like breathing through a straw. It feels like, um, it feels like work. And so we've tried to, we're trying to solve that. Um, so the solution is really simple, which is put all the data on one page. It's easier said than done. But the underlying that is this idea that somehow we need to make this sort of delightful and it, make it feel like exploring your data rather than feel like, you know, going to all these pages and editing all of these fields to get the data the, that you need in the sort of visual space you need to understand it all in your head. So I'm gonna give you a demo of that right now. We'll pop over to our demo server here. I close this old tab. What's this guy? I'm gonna get him out of the way. Okay, so this is Orion. And in this Orion instance, this sort of platform instance, we have a bunch of different tools, our network tool applications, configs, IP address, all of that is in this um, Orion platform. So the new uh, performance analysis view in home is right here. We'll click and open that. Okay, so on the uh, left side here, you see this metric palette. This is where you can look at all of your different entities, all of the different data sets. On the right side is where you drag the, the metrics to get the visualization, sort of your, your visualization canvas. So we're gonna start with a, a scenario here. Um, I'm going to uh, pretend I'm a network engineer, which I have been in a past life, so that makes it easier for me. Um, I'm going to uh, pretend, which is really easy, that a user has come up to me and said, hey, my access to you know, one of the web servers is running slow, has been running slow. So you know, website slow must be a network issue. Uh, that's why he's coming to me. Any slowness is clearly a network issue. So I'm gonna start investigating and, and see what I find here. So. Within this view, I'll go over to add entities on the left side. I know that that, that uh, web server uh, is called uh, WestWeb01. Now, quick note here is um, a lot of this could be shown, uh, sort of the, the, the entry point of this could totally be NetPath, but I'm excluding NetPath because I've talked to you guys a lot about NetPath. So NetPath aside, this is how Persec works. Um, so WestWeb01 is the server. So we've got two different things. Uh, here, um, I don't even know what those icons are. Okay, a node in a virtual machine. Okay, so I'm gonna select this node and I can see already all of the metrics that we keep for that node. So this is across all of the different tools, all of the different polling, all of the different protocols we use, all of the data is right here. So as a network engineer, what I'm thinking about is my transit. What sort of transit performance am I providing to this thing? And my first sort of proxy for that data set uh, or, or for that, that data is how uh, well is my polar getting over to that asset, getting over to the web asset. So I'm going to just look at response time. So we'll take a look at average response time. I'll drag that over. Percent loss, packet loss is definitely a, another big deal. So you can see that uh, both load up. So we can see immediately our Percent loss is like nothing, so great. Um, our latency is uh, varying some, let's see, up to 142. I don't really like that. On the other hand, they said it was a recent problem. Now we're looking at last 12 hours. Let's look at the last 24. So both of those metrics will change. Okay, so we've had some spikes, but it doesn't look like a consistent problem. It doesn't look like something the user would come to me and talk about. So maybe I'll, I'll dig into that deeper. But um, the next thing I'm gonna look at is, and this is pure intuition, is that um, the oftentimes when users going from my east to my west environment, which is the scenario here, uh, when they're having problems, it's because my site over in the east uh, uh, has its bandwidth, its, its MPLS bandwidth pegged, right? So I'm gonna take a quick look at that because I think that might be related. So we will um, go, and I, I forget the name exactly of that device. I know it was my WAN router, so I'm gonna search for that. Okay, East WAN router, here it is. We'll add that. Okay, so we've got a bunch of metrics about this device. I can look at the NetFlow status. Um, right now I just want I actually want the information about the interface specifically. Um, so this is all the node data. So what I can do is I can click on this guy. This is gonna add all of the related entities. 
So this uses um, sort of child entities that we find like interfaces, hardware. It also uses app stacks, relational view to navigate through all of, the, of your systems architecture. So all of those new entities just pop up here. So I'm gonna look at interfaces. Uh, looks like this is a MPLS circuit. Uh, this is the MPLS circuit, okay. And so this is my MPLS, this is a sub interface for the MPL, okay, great. So that's the right thing. And I'm gonna click on interface traffic here. Um, Cause I'm gonna start with seeing how, wow, there's a lot of data here. Okay, so I want transmit percent utilization, receive percent in utilization, let's start with that. Okay, so transmit's looking pretty good. Receive is definitely more bandwidth, but I don't really see a problem here. I, I'm feeling pretty comfortable until I'm running at maybe 80%. So this looks fine, so it wasn't the thing I initially thought. You know what, while we're here, we're gonna look at the errors and discards. <laughs> Now Cisco does not put those on the sub interface because right, it's, it, it's, it's um, errors are errored frames. So there may be a CRC failure or CRC checksum um, difference. So it throws away that frame. So we haven't even inspected the VLAN tag to tell us what, uh, what um, sub interface that would belong to. So I need to look at the physical interface. Physical interface is here. But I want to compare that to the sub interface. So I'm going to drag over my errors. Um, we'll do receive as expressed by a percent. I'm dragging that on my receive, drag this on my transmit. So no errors on both. Okay, great. Not only now, you can see the, the now value right here, but also as I mouse over, you, know, you can see the line at the bottom, you can see that 0% uh, is not changing. So that's looking pretty good too. Um, I could dig into the NetFlow data, but there doesn't appear to be a traffic problem here. So, you know what? Different companies have different levels of systems engineers. I know that our systems engineers sometimes let their systems run a little hot. So I'm just gonna take a quick look. You know, I have the node here. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a quick look at their CPU and memory. That's what I think about as a network engineer when I'm wondering how loaded a system is. Um, so we'll take a look at average CPU load. We'll take a look at uh, average memory. You, and I want a percent there as well. We've also got status uh, for that node. So I'll, I'll pull that over just to make sure that like there's no, hey, it dropped off or what have you. That looks fine. Looks fine all the way across. We do have CPU. Okay, CPU spiked starting at uh, around 10.06. 10.06 yesterday evening. Okay, so yeah, the, I mean, of all the data that I've looked at, this looks closest to what the user is reporting, right? I've got a significant change in the um, behavior of the infrastructure, and it's for an extended period of time that aligns with what the user has, uh, has told me about, has, is concerned about. So this seems like some sort of a systems issue is my guess. So you know what, um, I'm gonna make this really easy. I'm just gonna share this with my systems guy. So I will copy paste this and I'll send this over in an email to him. Uh, let, me, let me just do just do this real quick. Uh, well, it's all on one machine. So we're gonna copy paste this into a new, new window here and I'll send that um, to him. And all of these URLs contain all the data that you need um, to reconstruct the page. So the user with their proper permissions will just load up that data. You also get a chance to see the full screen view. But effectively, this looks like a systems problem to me. So we'll have the systems guy look into it. So here's a question. When you guys, <laughs> when you guys are pulling this information, when you're pulling this information mm -hmm. from you know, the different sources you're getting it from, I mean, how comprehensive is it if I want to get something that's not really maybe something you guys thought of or whatever, but it's available from the device. You know, how much work is it for me to, or is it possible for me to actually set that up, right? So I wanna grab some metrics from, you know, certain interfaces or, or whatever, and you guys don't have it built in. Is that something I can easily get to? So I guess there's two sides of that question. One is, um, uh, I think part of the answer is, this was built with the sort of data architecture of um, all of these tools in mind so that it, like we didn't add specifically interfaces. We just added that the, uh, the way that we store the data overall and then lots of this information just shows up. Yeah, so you're, ro you're rolling the information up into here, but mm -hmm. then from the collection point originally. Okay, so like collecting new metrics. Yeah. 
Yeah, so for that sort of thing, you can use a device studio or our universal device polar. These are two mechanisms for you to specify your own OID, specify your own translations, and get that data in, at least for SNMP data. What about the API data for the Meraki? Uh, the API data, like that's already in the system, um, so you don't have to worry about that, but the uh, we also have an SDK if you want to collect your own API data and try okay. and get that data. That's in. what I was getting at mostly because, you know, the API data when we have everything, a lot of times it's not everything, it's sort of everything we think people care about. Yeah, totally. But if it's extensible, then that, that solves that problem. Yeah, the, the, the SDK and our Swiss and Swickle tools are designed to solve that. So like